This is the seventh video on Introduction to Feedback. In this video, we're going to look at the impact of proportional feedback on second order systems. So previous videos used a number of examples to illustrate that proportional design leads to changes in the time constant and the steady state gain for first order systems. In this video, we're going to focus on second order models and in particular we're going to use second order models of this particular form given here b over s squared plus as plus b. You will notice there's no zero in this uh, transfer function and we're not going to do that but you could equally use the same ideas and work that out for yourself. Now we were also going to assume that students are familiar with concepts of damping and overshoot and general analysis of second order responses. So you should recognize this form down here, uh, omega n squared over s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared and these two being equivalent. We will expect students to be familiar with these terms for some of the analysis that follows. Now a final note, you will see that we've deliberately chosen the steady state gain of g to be 1 just because it makes results easier. You can of course use a different steady state gain if you want and the same principles will follow. This is just a reminder of the general context of this set of videos. We're looking at closed loop and the observation we're making is the closed loop transfer function, that's this one in here, gm over 1 plus gm, gives very different behaviours to the open loop, which is just g. And also, the closed loop transfer function is very much dependent on how you choose this m. What we're looking at in these videos is choices m of s equals k and asking what happens as we change k. First then, let's derive the closed loop transfer function for this second order model with proportional feedback. So you'll see we've given you g as b over s squared plus as plus b. We've given you the compensator m of s is k and we want the closed loop transfer function. So we're going to use the relationship gc equals gk over 1 plus gk. And if we substitute that in, we've got two alternatives. We could have this alternative here, kb of s squared plus as plus b plus kb or if we write it in the sort of damping type form we'll see we get c omega squared over s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared. Now we might interchange between these two as we are required. Now the final thing to note is I can work out the closed loop poles from the pole polynomial of this closed loop transfer function and here they are. See, the closed loop poles are given by minus a over 2 plus or minus the square root of a squared minus 4b times 1 plus k all over 2. Now, this is a calculation that we will use on future slides. And a final thing to note is if you look at damping forms, then zeta equals 1, which is critical damping, corresponds to this term in the square root, oops, sorry, I don't know where that's gone. The term in the square root, this term here, being equal to 1. So therefore we have critical damping if a squared equals 4b times 1 plus k. So let's look at gain first. Here's our closed loop transfer function again, kb of s squared plus as plus b plus kb. What's the steady state gain in the closed loop? Well, clearly, we've shown in early videos, you can get the steady state gain simply by substituting s equals 0, assuming that gain is finite. And in this case, the answer is simple, k over 1 plus k. Alternatively, we could say what's the closed loop offset for a unit step, um, and that's going to be this term here, 1 over 1 plus k. So what do you notice, just as with first order systems, the steady state gain has a simple dependence on the proportional compensator k. And a reminder here, we've assumed that g of s has got unit gain for convenience. These relationships would be slightly different if g of s did not have unit gain. And here's the same plot that you will have seen for first order systems. What we've done is we've plotted the closed loop gain or steady state gain, gc of 0, as a function of k. And what do you notice? If you have small k down here, the closed loop gain is small, and as k increases, the closed loop gain increases, but we never really get to 
to 1, unless obviously k goes to infinity. And so there's always going to be some form of offset if you have just proportional compensation. So in practice, you'll have an offset and probably quite a large one. What about convergence then, or speed of response? Well, you remember on the earlier side, we showed you what the closed loop poles were, and we've reminded you again there. There's the closed loop poles, and you can see the dependence on the proportional compensator, k. Let's have a look then at what happens if we have real roots. Well, in order to have real roots, the part in the square root has to be positive, which means that a squared has got to be bigger than 4b times 1 plus k in order to get real roots. So what that's telling us, and you see I've written it here, is that k has to be relatively small. So if you take the critical damping case, when a squared equals 4b times 1 plus k, then both your poles will be in the same position. They'll both be at minus a over 2, and you can see that from this expression here at the top. However, if k is smaller than that value, then you'll find one of the poles is less than minus a over 2, which means it's fast, if I write that there, and one is greater than minus a over 2, which means it's slow. So in other words, if you increase the damping, which means if you reduce k, then you're going to slow down the behavior because you have a slow pole. So reducing k, you get slower behavior. What happens then if you allow k to be large? So here we go, we've allowed large k. This will give us an underdamped system, but the key thing is, in this case, what's in this square root at the top for large k is now the square root of a negative number, which is going to give you an imaginary solution, and so the real part of your roots is now constant. So what that tells you is for large k, for an underdamped system, the convergence rate does not change. The real part of the poles is the same. Okay, so what have we got? If you want the fastest response, then ideally you want critical damping, which is when both the poles are the same. So we have this expression, 4b times 1 plus kc equals a squared. So that gives both the real poles in the same place. The fastest response you can get. If you choose k to be less than this critical value, you'll have an overdamped system. This means k is smaller, overdamped system, and you will be slower. So if k is less than the critical damp, damping value, you will be slow. If you choose k to be bigger than this critical damp value, then the system becomes underdamped. However, the real part of the poles is constant. So although you've got an underdamped system and you may have some oscillation, actually the rate of convergence is the same as with critical damping. Let's look at oscillation then. And in this particular case, we're, we're looking specifically at this bit in the square root. And you remember we said if k becomes too large, that square root, the part in the square root becomes negative. So we get imaginary part. So the poles are complex and we have oscillation. So first of all, critical damping, a reminder of that, no oscillation, probably about the best you can get. If you have real roots with small k, no oscillation, but your poles are widely spaced. However, if k is bigger than the critical damping, then this imaginary part in the roots is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So as k gets bigger, the damping ratio gets smaller, the imaginary part of the root gets bigger, and the oscillation gets worse. Typically, you'll want the damping ratio to be greater than about 0.7, because otherwise the oscillation will be unacceptable. OK. This slide is here just for completeness, just a reminder of what we did in the first order um, analysis. What we showed is that the initial value of u of 0 with proportional gain is actually equal to k. So it's just a reminder that you can't just keep increasing k as big as you like, because u of 0 in practice will be limited. I could put a line across here and I could say for some practical example, there might be up and limit on u and that therefore gives you an implicit upper limit on the effective proportional gain. An illustration then. We've given you a system here, g equals 1 
over s squared plus 2s plus 0.1. We've add, added the proportional compensator and calculated the closed loop transfer function. There it is, gc equals k of s squared plus 2s plus 0.1 plus k. And we've put in this table, how do the poles and the damping and the closed loop gain vary as I change k? So if k equals 0.5, the closed loop steady state gain is 0.83, so there's something of an offset. The slowest pole is at minus 0.37, and I'm overdamped. I think I've got those uh, back to front. That should be greater than 1, shouldn't it? So I'm overdamped. If k equals 0.9, the steady state gain becomes 0.9. The slowest pole is minus 1, and the damping ratio is 1. So that's critical damping I'm going to get if k equals 0.9. If k goes bigger than critical damping, notice I've got a reduced offset in the steady state, because the steady state gain is now up to 0.9. 97. The slowest pole is the same as with critical damping, and now, of course, I'm underdamped. Okay? And if k goes up to 3, then you notice the steady state gain is now quite good. It's up to 0.99. I'll have a very small offset. The slowest pole is still minus 1, so it converges quite well. However, I will have a lot of oscillation. Here's some resp responses to show you that. So you'll see with k equals 0.5, I've got this nice smooth response, but it converges relatively slowly. So that's k equals 0.5. If I increase k up to the critical damping case, that's this green curve, you see it responds much faster and it settles quite well. Of course, there is an offset because the target up here is 1, <coughs> but that's quite a nice curve. However, if I now increase k further still, so let's look at k equals 3, and maybe I'll do this with black, you see you get this red curve, and what happens now is you're beginning to get some oscillation. It still converges and settles quite fast. However, there's a bit of an overshoot and a bit of oscillation. And finally, if I take k too large all the way up to 10, what do I notice? I get quite a bit of oscillation now. All right, But it still settles fairly fast. So, some questions. How might I select this proportional gain? So what convergence rate is desirable for this system? And I think we'd all agree that given you get the same convergence rate with critical damping, then some k around critical damping is logical in general. What closed loop gain is desirable? What we've seen is you increase the proportional gain, then you increase the closed loop gain, and therefore you reduce the offset. However, as you increase the gain, once you'll be above critical uh, damping, then you start to get overshoot and oscillation, and that might be unacceptable. So there's a limit to how far you can push the gain before the oscillation is too much. There's also questions about how much actuator energy is available, because the initial value of the input is linked to the proportional gain. And we've not talked about uncertainty in these videos, but that's another thing that might come into a final design. Now, a reminder at the bottom, there is no single correct answer when it comes to control design. The key thing is you understand the impact of different decisions so that you can basically use the requirements that you've got in order to get the best design. So some conclusions. For second order systems, the closed loop gain, damping ratio, and maximum input have a simple link to the controller gain in K. The slowest pole gets slower if you have small K, but is constant for large K and the convergence is fastest for k near to critical damping. The closed loop gain approaches unity as k increases, but for normal choices of k, practical choices, it's never going to be that close to 1. And for large k, the system is going to be underdamped and could be highly oscillatory and have large overshoots, which in general is unacceptable. One thing we didn't mention, but is clear, all these responses were stable, so the closed loop poles all stayed in the left half plane for any positive value of k, which is something good. Now, just a reminder, for all these examples, we had a closed loop offset with a simple proportional control law and a second order system, and so consequently, using just proportional control is unlikely to be acceptable in most scenarios.